Hi, this is Brother Barnes, your recovery Bible study guy. And I'm going to be reading out of the New Living Translation, so make sure you look under the video for the page numbers that match the scriptures that I'm going to be reading. And my dad, Grover Dwayne Barnes, is the one that gave me the idea to look at this passage of scripture. This is in Ruth, and being a professor himself, my dad had scribbled in the margin that Ruth was a great example of Leverite law. So I'm going to talk about that as we go. The truth is, this story that I want to tell you is a story of romance. It's a story of redemption. It's a story of broken people having a good end. Let's think about Deuteronomy 25, verse 5 first, and let's talk about that Leverite law. In Deuteronomy 25, verse 5, God had given the instruction that a woman who was widowed, who had lost her husband with no children, could marry a brother of the man, and he could marry her and help her have children so that the lineage would not be extinct, so that she would be able to carry on the name of her husband. And that's part of the, the law, but it's also kind of part of the romance in this story. The story begins in Ruth 1. And in an interesting way, a man named Elimelech and a woman named Naomi, who lived in Judah, were in a period of famine. And so they headed east. They headed uh, around the Dead Sea and into Moab. They had two sons, Milan and Kilion. And in some bad change of circumstance, which we don't really understand, Elimelech and his sons died in Moab. And so... Naomi was left there with the brides of these two young men. They had taken Moabite women as their wives. And just bear in mind that in Israelite law, this was really forbidden. Marrying women from other countries was not encouraged at all because of the risk of worshiping other gods other than the one true God. So, what had happened was that Naomi and Orpah and Ruth had left Moab and they were heading back to Judah. Orpah decided to go back and be with her family, but Ruth continued. Ruth said to Naomi, she said, wherever you go, I will go and your people will be my people. And the beautiful thing is that when Ruth made that commitment, that really came true. And the other beautiful thing about it is that's the same kind of decision that we make for Jesus in our lives. Wherever you go, I will go. Your church will be my church. A little bit more background that's kind of interesting here. The land of Moab, the people of Moab, had begun because Lot's daughters, after leaving Sodom and Gomorrah, after the destruction there, decided they would get their father drunk and have babies by him because they thought there was no other opportunity for them to have children. And so that's what happened. So this whole land came from an incestuous relationship. To add a little bit more drama to this story, there was one of the judges earlier spoken of named Ehud, who had assassinated the king of Moab. This guy was so big that the sword disappeared into his body. So there's drama, there's incest, there's alcohol issues, there's assassinations. So Naomi and Ruth wind up in Judah. And Ruth collects barley along with the harvesters. And there was a man that noticed her. His name was Boaz. Naomi reminded Ruth that he happened to be a kinsman redeemer. He could fulfill this Leverite law. So she told Ruth, get cleaned up, go lay at his feet as he is on the threshing floor. 
as he is sleeping. And that's exactly what happened. Ruth laid at his feet. He woke up in a startle in the middle of the night, and he's like, who are you? And she explained, and he immediately had compassion on her. He said, Ruth, you could easily have a younger man. You're not chasing after people. You're looking for the honor of your family. I will do everything I can do to fulfill this honor. And so he had to go to town and kind of do some wheeling and dealing. There was another guy that was actually closer kin than he was. But in the end, Boaz in Ruth 4 married Ruth. He bought all the property that belonged to the family. And there was a baby born. And the baby's name was Obed. So the peculiar revelation with baby Obed was that baby Obed, the child of Ruth and Boaz, happened to be the grandfather of King David. The genetic line of King David also gave rise to Jesus the Christ. So David, being part Moabite, gave rise to our Savior, who in effect was part Moabite. As Jesus came, he bore our burdens. He became like one of us. So are you following this trail? There's a trail of imperfection. There's a trail of intermarriage with other nations. But there's a trail of people trying to come back. There's a trail of people looking for redemption. And redemption occurred. I love Ephesians 1, 1 through 14. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5, it says that God decided in advance to adopt us into his family. So as Boaz brought Ruth into his family, so Jesus Christ has brought us into the family by the sacrifice of blood. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. A little bit further in the chapter, it says this. God's purpose was that we Jews, who were the first to trust in Christ, would bring praise and glory to God. And now you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And back to verse 13 again regarding the Gentiles. We are the Gentiles. We are the Moabites. We are the ones that are unclean. We are are the unholy that have been made pure by Jesus Christ, by his sacrifice. Jesus Christ, our Boaz. In the same way that Boaz redeemed the land, he married, he helped her bear a child, Jesus Christ gives us hope. We are Ruth. One interesting last note before we finish this story. This is an awesome end to everything. Sometimes in recovery, we want the past behind us. We want to forget it all and leave it behind. But remember this, it's sometimes important not to burn bridges. The good relationships that we have, we need to keep those. What happened in 1 Samuel 22, 3 and 4 is very interesting. So the grandson of Obed, David, when he was on the run from Saul, went back to Moab to the king at that time and said, Will you take care of my parents? And the king of Moab did that. So a wonderful end of the story, a story of redemption. Jesus is my Boaz. He is your Boaz. You are the bride of Christ, and so am I. Oh, the drama. Oh, the drama of Moab. But in the end, Jesus Christ makes it all work out. The story ends well when Jesus is in the picture.